G'day everyone, this is Dr. Peter Price of Classroom Professor. Welcome to this video in which I'm going to talk about adding and subtracting fractions. This goes with the free math worksheets series and the worksheets this week come from this book, Bring It On, book three, which is about fractions. So this is aimed at grade five level or year six. So it's for students who know all their number facts and are ready to deal with fractions in uh, an operational setting. So the first thing to notice here is that we have two different arrangements for this operation. We can do them horizontally or vertically. I think it's fair to say the horizontal arrangement is the traditional one. It's certainly the one that I learned at school. Um, the vertical one I'm seeing show up in textbooks and different places so um, it's clearly being being accepted by more and more teachers. So, But it tends to be the newer one. Uh, so. I'm going to show both and the worksheets that you'll see attached to this video um, use both arrangements so one worksheet will be in horizontal format and the next one will be in vertical and so on. So looking at addition here we have 5 6 and 2 6 and we're going to add them together not a terribly difficult question of course. Another thing I want to say early on here at this point is that I'm seeing a lot of students, my students who are in the main young adults who are pre-service teachers, don't call these six. Typically they read them as five over six and two over six. That's a bit like reading a number like that as 3.2. It's an adult sort of shorthand if you like for reading a fraction but it doesn't emphasize what it all means. So when it comes to decimals um, the approach I recommend is to say three and two tenths so you emphasize what the two means. It's similar with common fractions. We want our students to know that these are sixths and then be able to explain what that means. Not see it as just two numbers with a line in the middle. Uh, the line of course is called a vinculum, that's the technical name. Uh, we want the students to know what sixths are. They, want, they need to know how to um, say them correctly read the fraction in that way and so on. So we're adding six. Now we could say to our students five sixths and two sixths is a bit like adding five apples and two apples. I've used that as a, a, a way of helping the students see that the word sixths is the name of the type of thing that we're adding together which is not a bad way of seeing it. It also helps link to the idea of denominator which gives a fraction its name. That's what denominator really means. So however we do it we're going to explain to students that this is in sixths and the answer will be a number of six. Of course we should use diagrams to help the students so early on especially we want our students to be able to see that six, that's not a very good diagram but um, six are like that. We will shade in five six on one shape two on another. Of course the circles must be the same size so that we can add them together. We can see that will make seven. I'm running out of space here. So students should see easily that that will take up an entire whole plus another one. None of this is terribly difficult. So we would initially want the students to say that that is seven sixths and of course when they're ready for mixed numbers and improper fractions they should be able to convert that into one and one sixth. Let's look at the vertical arrangement. Now the vertical arrangement has a number of advantages over the horizontal arrangement. One of which is the fact that it's consistent with our algorithm for adding whole numbers. So we're used to adding them vertically uh, when they're whole numbers. We can do the same thing here um, with some modifications for common fractions. So again we're going to explain to our students that we have ninths so the answer will be in ninths. So we'll write that down first. How many ninths do we have here? How many ninths there? Six plus four is a simple number of fact that's ten. Now here we have another option. Um, I found not everybody likes this, not everybody is ready to do it this way but I'd like to recommend that especially for um, more able students, the more advanced students I suppose, that instead of quickly writing the 10 down and then converting it into a, a mixed number, we could say to our students before we go any further, do we have enough to make up a whole? A bit like we do with adding whole numbers. Do we have enough of these to make 10? 
so we can make one in the next column. In this case, we're saying, do we have enough to make nine to make a hole? Of course we do. So we can put, if you like, a one in the holes place, so we can write the one down here straight away. And of course, there's going to be one ninth left over. So that's an option. It's certainly not necessary. You don't have to do it that way. And students may find it easier to just straight away write down 10 ninths, and then we can write it over on this side one and one ninth. All right, let's look at some subtraction. So we'll have, let's do ninths again. Whoops, I was thinking of the answer as I write this down. So we'll do one horizontally and one vertically. Because addition and subtraction are inverse operations of each other, they behave in similar sorts of ways um, when we're dealing with common fractions. The, the basic concepts are the same as they were for addition, so none of this is terribly difficult. Again, we're going to call these ninths, so we can Im immediately write down what's the denominator of the answer, what's the name of the fractions that we have in the answer. 8 take away 5, of course, is a simple number fact, and that's 3. Now we come to an answer that can be simplified, and you'll see in the worksheets that uh, several of the questions will say, simplify the answer if you can. So, um, unless a student is able to do all this in their head and write down the simplified answer straight away, most students will write it down um, in this form first, and then we can convert. I don't have time to go over the process of conversion, but um, Students that are ready for that, you know, will be able to do that quite easily. And then in the vertical format, again, these are simple examples. The denominators are the same. There's no regrouping to do. And so, um, again, we're going to have sevenths. Five take away two is three. That can't be simplified. And so that's the answer. So these are the first steps in adding and subtracting fractions. As the students become familiar with these, they'll be able to tackle more difficult questions in the future. So that's it for this video. I look forward to talking to you next time.